How is it going everyone? This is High Yield MCAT and today we're going to be talking about our basic or polar amino acids of which there are three. We have lysine, arginine, and histidine. So let's jump right into the vital elements that you need to know about each of these for your MCAT exam. So first let's start with lysine. Its three letter abbreviation is pretty intuitive. It is lys or L-Y-S. Its one letter abbreviation, on the other hand, is less intuitive. It is K. So keep that one in mind. Now, most importantly for the MCAT, we want to be familiar with the structure. So let's first off draw our backbone that's going to be common to every single amino acid, whether it's basic, acidic, polar, or nonpolar, and then draw out the R group, which is going to be what makes lysine lysine what makes it unique so we have one carbon two carbon three carbon four carbons and then attached to that fourth carbon we have an amino group and that amino group is going to be protonated and carry a positive charge so basic amino acids carry a net positive charge and of course its classification is going to be basic and polar because we are covering basic polar amino acids today. Now the PKR for this is kind of interesting. It's about 9.7, very similar to our N-terminus, but for the MCAT we're going to approximate it to 9.5 because we don't need to know those PKRs super exactly. Now lysine special characteristic is actually pretty important, so they play an important role in histones. So if you don't know what histones are, definitely something you want to be aware of. They complex with DNA to form nucleosomes. And histones are basically a protein, of course. And they have these lysine side chains that can be acetylated to open up our chromatin and make our DNA more euchromatic or open to transcription. So it can be acetylated. So that's going to be very important. And just um, to kind of show you how that works, let's edit our lysine just a little bit. So if we take off this positive charge and we let the N get its lone pair back and we take an acetyl group, so our little AC is going to be this guy here, attached to an R group, we can and in this case, our R group will um, just be something that's going to be removed. We can complex with this, and then to simplify the mechanism a little bit, our end product that we end up getting, I can erase this a little bit better, is that N forming an amide. And now, our basic amino acid that was previously positively charged is now neutralized. So that's histone acetylation, and that occurs at lysine. So we're going to erase that just to make sure we understand that that is not how lysine looks most of the time. But most of the time it carries this positive charge. And the reason that lysine is so important to histones is that DNA carries a net negative charge thanks to the phosphate backbone that it has. Therefore, lysine being positively charged can coulombically interact with that DNA quite well. So that's it for lysine. Now let's take a look at arginine. So arginine has a very intuitive three-letter abbreviation of ARG and a slightly less intuitive one-letter abbreviation of R. However, phonetically, R genine sounds like R, so that is one way you can remember it. So let's draw out the structure. Again, we're going to start with our backbone that is going to be common to every amino acid that we draw out. Now, arginine is a bit more complex. We have one carbon, two carbon, three carbons. Then we have a nitrogen, the lone pair in an H. Then we have this attached to another carbon. Now this carbon is going to be attached to two more nitrogens. 
one double bonded to a nitrogen that is protonated, giving us a positive charge, and one that will not be protonated. So this, um, this functional group is called a guanidino group. Now it's not super important to the MCAT, but if you're wondering, that is what it is called. And it carries that positive charge. So its classification, of course, is basic or polar, being positively charged at our physiological pH. And its pKr is pretty high, so it's not going to participate in a lot of acid-base reactions. Um, it's about 12.5, really, uh, to be more specific, about 12.48. Now, special characteristics, there definitely are some, but they're not going to be super applicable for the MCAT. So we're going to skip over those. If you are interested, arginine also does um, play some important role in histones as well, so you can definitely go look that up if that interests you. Now finally, let's finish with histidine. So histidine's three-letter abbreviation, again, is pretty intuitive. So H-I-S, or his. And its one-letter abbreviation is fortunately pretty intuitive as well, H. Now let's get into its structure. And histidine has one of the more complex structures. So we're going to start with our backbone that's common among all amino acids. Now we have one carbon out, another carbon out, and then we form a functional group called an imidazole ring. So we're attached to a nitrogen, attached to a carbon, which is double bonded to a nitrogen. And then we finish up this ring here. And this is the N1 tautomer. So we'll get into what this means just in a little bit. Now the classification, of course, of histidine is going to be basic or polar, because we're focusing on those today. So interestingly, though, this guy will not be positively charged at physiological pH. And the reason for that is that its pKr is approximately 6, and physiological pH is 7.4. So even though it is a basic or polar amino acid, it will not be positively charged as opposed to lysine and arginine, which definitely will carry that positive charge. So that is something definitely to keep in mind, is that histidine is going to be neutral. So when you're looking at biochemical analysis techniques, especially things like ion exchange chromatography, keep in mind that histidine is going to be neutral at any pH above 6, which includes physiological pH. So special characteristics for histidine, just to know, um, there are definitely more than this, but just keeping in mind that imidazole functional group. So imidazole functional group. There are definitely a lot more, and histidine is a very important amino acid, especially in hemoglobin. But that is pretty much without outside of the scope of MCAP. Now, just to finish up with histidine, let's show where this protonation occurs. So let's say we have a uh, hydronium ion in solution here. So hydronium just being positively charged water. This nitrogen can use its lone pair as a nucleophile and pick up that electrophilic H and abstract that hydrogen. And what we end up getting is our protonated form. And remember, this is only going to occur when our local environment in our body is less than a pH of 6, or we're manipulating our environment so that it's more favorable to have a positive charge. So one way we can get histidine to be positively charged is if we place it next to a negatively charged amino acid. Do you remember what a negatively charged amino acid may be? Those would be the acidic polar amino acids, either aspartate or glutamate. All right. So that's it for the high yield part of the MCAT. Now I wanted to go over uh, tautomerization of histidine. Now this won't be super high yield, so feel free to stop this video and move on to the next. But now we're gonna be focusing on why histidine is drawn a little bit different in different diagrams. On our scheme here, we can see that histidine is shown slightly differently on each side. So on our left, we have this hydrogen over here, 
And then on the right, we have our hydrogen over here. So which one exactly is right? Well, both of them are sort of right, at least in aqueous solution, because we have a thing called tautomerization going on here. And tautomerization, you may have heard before in Orgo 2, when we are transferring in aqueous solution between an enol functional group, so E-N-O-L, to a carbonyl functional group. So that could be a ketone or aldehyde, uh, most likely a ketone. So what we have going on here is our nitrogen on our left will pick up a hydrogen from a hydronium ion and then this hydronium ion will take on an extra electron, electron pair becoming water. So we move on to our resonance structures in the middle. Our immediate product can undergo some electron rearrangement to form our structure on the right. Now, water can pick up this hydrogen and allow this nitrogen to take up the lone pair. And finally, we get the tautomer on the right, which is the N3 tautomer, or our N tau H tautomer. And the one on the left can also be called the N pi H tautomer, depending on how you want to label it. So this is tautomerization. So in a way, both of these tautomers are, quote unquote, the right ways to draw histidine. So both of them are right, and the positive charge, again, when histidine is at a pH that is less than 6, it will be protonated, that positive charge is distributed evenly, or nearly evenly, between the two nitrogens. That's because of the tautomerization. However, we tend to draw the N1 tautomer because some evidence, according to the research, does show that tautomerization favors this N1 tautomer a little bit more than the N3. So I just wanted to clear up any confusion you have about different forms of histidine that you see drawn. So if you put in Google Images histidine, you'll see both versions, and both versions are really right. So don't worry too much about that. All right, that's it today for High Yield MCAT. So leave a like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you would like to see next for your MCAT exam.